what can science do? Uh, you know, I, we've been, I've been reading for years about bioremediation, the microbes you talked about. I, I learned this week that microbes, these little, little bugs, eat the equivalent of two Exxon Valdez spills <laughs> a year in the Gulf that just occur naturally out of the earth. Is there a way to freeze dry them, spray them on the, you know, I mean, what? <laughs> well, we shouldn't poison them for heaven's sake. Yeah, we should, I guess we should. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that we've learned the last 50 years, it's safe to say, wouldn't you say that we've learned more about the ocean than during all preceding human history? About the time that your grandfather really began to look beneath the surface, so were other individuals, the science of, of knowing plate tectonics, about continental drift, about understanding that from the surface to the greatest depth, there's life. And the diversity of life is in the ocean. Now, all the major divisions of life basically are there, and only about half occur on the land. So what we've learned, basically, though, is that the ocean drives climate and weather, generates maybe 70% of the oxygen in the atmosphere. You talk about microbes, there's one little blue-green bacterium that accounts, according to Penny Chisholm at MIT, who, with her colleagues, discovered this little blue-green beast one, the oxygen, and one in every five breaths you take. About 20% of the oxygen uh -huh. comes from this one kind of blue-green bacterium. And we didn't even know of its existence when your grandfather started diving, when I started diving, for heaven's sakes. We now know that unless we take care of the ocean, nothing else really matters, because the ocean keeps us alive. And it isn't just about microbes to gobble up accidents that we generate. It's microbes and all the rest of life in the ocean and on the land as well, the natural systems that we, we have just marched through them, consuming the assets, thinking that there didn't matter what we did to the natural world, that it was so resilient, so abundant, that we could get away with it. But now we know, A, that we have the power to destroy and change the nature of nature, and B, that's not good news for us. The, the problem, uh, going back to your original question about these bacteria, um, you know, every time we tinker with nature, we're, we're in for surprises, and very often they're unpleasant surprises, and, and we have to proceed with caution. One of the strangest jobs I ever had was serving as a consultant for Biosphere 2. You remember when they locked those guys inside for two years? And they all got really skinny uh, because everything died inside. And oxygen levels plummeted. Carbon dioxide levels got to near toxic levels. And the only things that did really well in the end were cockroaches and ants. Right. And they weren't even <laughs> supposed to be there. <laughs> and and this, this was all taking place in, in an environment that we supposedly had complete control over. That's a pretty humbling lesson for Biosphere One, which is planet Earth. And so when I hear solutions like that, I applaud the creativity, but we proceed at our own risk.